Yes, brother. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. Allah says in Quran that uh, He has given the love and affection between the husband and wife. So I would like to know how did Prophet tendered his love and affection to all the wives? Like what were the instances where, where in Prophet or maybe in a nutshell to ask you a romantic life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brother asks a question in the Quran says that Allah has put love and mercy between the hearts of men and women. What he's quoting is the verse of the Quran of Surah Rum, chapter number 30 verse number 21 where Allah says that Allah has put love and mercy between the hearts of men and women. So many people think love means haram, taboo in Islam. See, love is not taboo in Islam, but done according to Quran, Hadith is right. Love what they have LBW in the college, they do love before wedding, not in cricket. Love before wedding, then you go to a movie theater alone and you want to check how the girlfriend, that's all haram. But love between man and woman done in the right way is good. Therefore, beloved Prophet said that if you have sex with the wife, it's charity. So Saba said that having sex with the charity, I mean, I understand. So the Prophet said that because you're not doing anything haram, you aren't doing zina, you're doing halal, that is charity. So imagine. So now coming back to your question, that how did the Prophet? I mean, there are various examples. But one thing you'll find in the hadith, that mashallah, unlike the other religious scriptures, when they talk about love making, when they talk about married life, many times it seems to be obscene. But in the examples given in the Quran, and in the hadith, alhamdulillah, phenomenal. In the Quran, it's out of the question. The words used in the Quran, see, the same thing can be described in a way which is, mashallah, very modest. And same time, the message is put across. And several examples, Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 221, and various examples you can find in the Quran. By the time, you're not permitted to give all the examples unless you ask. Like, there are many words used, which if I use it, it's not obscene. But if I use it, the similar word, the meaning is the same, but the word is not obscene. Similarly, we see the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The various hadith in which how the Prophet behaved with the wife. Like what we learn in medical books that find that when you have sex, the foreplay is required. The same thing is in the hadith, but in the good way. There are ways in which the hadith saying that the Prophet nudged the wife. That means he fooled with her. And he smiled. Like in the Islamic concept, you feel that a wife cannot even call the husband. She'll say, can't call by name. Sunye. I mean, wife taking the name of husband is taboo. I mean, no, this saying the wife taking the name of husband. Fine, you should respect your husband. But Sunni, how you behave is very important. But in the hadith, Prophet always said that you should not discuss the intimacy of the husband and wife in public. Therefore, you will not find any hadith talking about vulgarity, which is seem vulgar. And neither should you discuss about your wife with your friends also. About the personal thing, other things you want to advise, what should she do, that's a different thing. But about the sexual relationship, it's not permissible for the men to discuss with other men or the women to discuss with other women. It's a personal thing. What is haram is mentioned in the Quran. Few things are haram. Many people think, oh, both haram, both halal. This Islam has so many do's, don't. Only 70 do's and don'ts, major. Minor are many. But in the world, you can do a million things. Akon Imam Adhabi, there are 70 major sins, and minor may be many more. But percentage-wise, the do's and do's are less than 1%. Out of 100 things, only 1% may be coming in do's and don'ts, in faraiz and haram, everything else. So similarly, in the sexual life, the Prophet has given hadith in which this is prohibited. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, 223, that approach the wife the way you want. Because they are your till. It's also the Quran, approach your wife. But again, what is prohibited is that you cannot approach from the real private part, which is prohibited. That's it. Everything else, so it's very clear cut. And which even scientifically, in the sex is haram. So besides that, you can explore the way you want. It is permitted. There may be certain things which may be mustab, certain things which may be mubah, may be makru. What is haram has been specified. What is haram is haram. And what is fard is fard. Everything else comes in mubah. Mubah or maybe mustab or makru. Only what is haram has been haram. Everything else is permissible. So if to say anything is haram, you have to get a text from the Quran or the Hadith. If you can't support any of your text for haram, everything has become halal. In the halal category, it can be fard, it can be mustab, it can be mubah, it can be makru. That's a different question altogether. So the various Hadith prophets spend time, sometimes more with this wife, sometimes that wife. But overall, it was equal.
There are various instances where some of the wives were young, some of the wives played with things when they were very young. Fine, so the Prophet did permit. The instance in which her Aisha may Allah be pleased with her. She wanted to see something happen. There was a program we had in the Arab custom. I don't call it a dance, not the dance that we have normally. But, you know, they have a particular session with that, where she wanted to watch. So the hadith says that her Aisha may Allah be pleased with her. She saw from one side of the Prophet. No, she climbed on the Prophet's back. But seeing to it that she maintains the hijab and she peeped above the shoulder. So that means the wife can even look from behind the husband's back and climb on husband's back. I mean, this is what to interpret. So like that, there are hundreds of hadiths. You can give a talk only on this. That what the Prophet did, how did he laugh, how did he joke. But everything was within the purview of the Sharia. So only what is haram you should know. Everything else is halal. So what you should know is what is haram. These few things are haram. Everything is. There is no verse in the Quran or the Hadith saying that calling the husband with the name is haram. It may be the culture, kya sunye? That is the reason what the psychology they tell us. The psychology tell us that those who have premarital sex, they don't enjoy sex with the life partner. So the people who don't have premarital sex, they enjoy the sexual life after marriage much more than a person who has premarital sex. And the scientific proven. The statistics. So here we explore the way we want to explore. You know what is haram, everything else we explore. And the more you explore, the more you enjoy. So in this way, mashallah, Islam is very clear cut.